Sorry, sorry, Jessica. Okay, we'll start all over again. Uh, we will call the meeting to order for August, August 15th. Um, that's not today. At least I know that much. September 19th, 2019. Um, there we go. We now officially have a quorum, and we will do introductions. Jason? Uh, Jason Dosh, Town of Palmer Lake. Aaron Busto, Federal Highways. Kathleen Collins, CDOT. Darren Horsmeyer, Shreve Air Force Base. Rick Arvin, Fort Carson. Lachelle Davis, CDOT. Victoria Chavez, El Paso County. Wendy Pettit, CDOT Region 2. Shane Ferguson with CDOT Region 2. Patty Henshin, CDOT Region 2. Junior Rodriguez, CDOT Region 2. Brian Vitoli, City of Colorado Springs, Mountain Metro Transit. Stephen Jacobson, Air Force Academy. Sally Riley, City of Woodland Park. Darren Tangerman, City of Woodland Park. Kathleen Wenger, PPACG. Tim Roberts, City of Colorado Springs. And staff. Jessica Beckel, PPACG. William Mast, PPACG. I'm assuming John's not joining us. You're, you're John for today? I am, yes. Okay. And then John Merritt will be here eventually from Manitou Springs. And we'll let him say hi when he finds a seat. Um, I have a quick change to the agenda as long as there's no objection. Does anyone object to switching 7A and 7B? Doing 7B first and 7A second. Can I get a motion that reflects that? Move approval with amendment. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Public comments. I think we have zero public. Anybody dying to say something as the public? Okay. Um, minutes. Any comments on the minutes? Any motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Catherine, are you our board of directors report? Aye. I just realized before this. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay. So the board approved an I-25 PL letter of support that CDOT requested, and that's to move into an a, uh, additional section of I-25 beyond just the GAP project. Um, they also approved our transportation improvement program policies and procedures, as we suggested, and they also made a couple other suggestions about, sh instead of saying uh, needs to, they said shall or must, um, but it didn't change anything substantially. It's just a couple of wording changes. Um, but that was approved. And then um, there was a front range passenger rail study presentation given. I, we talked about the, a tip, uh, and we gave a pre or John gave a presentation regarding what the tip process is, and then we talked about the new schedule and allocation. And then they saw a draft of the long range transportation plan um, that has the committee edits. And that's all. Any questions for Catherine? John, would you like to introduce yourself real quick for the group, please? Hi, I'm Interim John Merritt, Interim Director of Public Services in Manitou. I'll probably be showing up for about two meetings and then I'll disappear again. Hopefully I'll get to introduce my replacement. Well, thanks for coming. Action item 6A, Catherine? Kathleen Wingo, Transportation Planner, PPACG. Pass off to here. Okay, so over the last few months, you've seen some drafts for our long range transportation plan, the 2045, moving forward. And we've given you the opportunity to look at the, to review, make edits, and then we also brought back any comments that we received and the edits that we've made based on the committee review. So thank you for all our comments. Um, we didn't receive any additional comments based on the comments we received and so now we're bringing this to you to release to the public for our 30-day public comment period and so that is all I have with <laughs> Any questions for Catherine? This Any proposed cool. motion? <laughs> Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Catherine. 
Item 6B, Transit and Roadway Development Program Prioritization. Okay. I'm passing around a couple documents that are the, in your agenda item there were the previously approved list, and these are the um, new suggested list coming around. So last year, there was a transit and a roadway development program prioritization list, lists that were approved by Attack CAC and the board, and these are lists that are created in case we get additional funding or if additional funding has been identified for projects beyond what's listed in our TIP and our long-range plan, but mainly the TIP. Um, so we have two separate lists. There's a transit one that is transit focused and that's um, has been um, reviewed and prioritized by MMT and the ones that's being passed around is the suggested list by Brian. And then we also have a roadway development one that has been developed and prioritized by CDOT and uh, Shane will talk about that. So um, I will hand it over to Brian if that's okay and he can chat about any changes he may have made from the previous list. Sure. Uh, thanks, Catherine, and thank you for the opportunity to update this. Um, so once, I just have a quick question um, while this is still being passed out. I guess for those who are, are new and just to remind everybody who is somewhat familiar with this, can you kind of give an explanation of why we do a roadway development program and a transit development program. And I mean, at least from the transit side, um, last fall was the first time we've had one. That was kind of in anticipation of Proposition 110, which was the, uh, you know, a list of multimodal projects that went to the voters. Um, it was not approved or uh, accepted, but that kind of got the ball rolling for us to have a, a transit development program. Um, but I guess, so if you could give a little bit of background about why we do this and um, why we need them, and I guess why we need to keep these updated, and um, that, would, that would be great. Sure, of course. So we, these lists have been requested by CDOT, um, the transit one by CDOT's transit division, and then the, the roadway by our region two specifically. And so, uh, the, the lists are created so that we have something prioritized, our projects prioritized by the region that we can then send up to um, CDOT headquarters or to um, uh, the Transportation Commission as suggestions for what we prioritize in our region and so that we don't have um, projects that come down to us or that get funded that we don't exactly think are our priorities within the region. Um, so I believe Last year, like Brian mentioned, there was, we had um, a proposal that went through to um, the voters and there was a list of projects that not everyone agreed on. And so this was a way to um, ensure that we have our prioritized list before they come to us and ask us for any kind of list or before they send it to the public for um, a voting proposal. And if, I don't know if Shane wants to add anything to that specifically for the roadway or Yes, yeah, so for um, the list that we developed, this will be the one-page Excel spreadsheet. Um, this one's in particular identified for Senate Bill 267. That, um, if you'll remember, this is it's already been year one has been funded. It's a four-year program, about 500 million a year allotted throughout the state. Um, I believe um, for year two, it's actually going to be 665 million. Um, but regardless. Um, what we're trying to capture with this list is what is BPACG's priorities um, as far as ranking them, um, and then that will be um, sent up to the Transportation Commission where they're going to decide actually how to spend that um, Senate Bill 267 funding. Um, I don't know if we're wanting to go through this list now or I don't want to jump the gun on Mount Metro or what have you, but we can go through this if you'd like at this time. Perfect. Either way. Sure. Think, real yeah. quick, I'll just ask before we get in the roadway, if you don't mind, Shane. Okay. Does anybody object to Brian's list? I mean, is there someone just dying to go through that one by one? I know I'm not, but I gotta ask. Anybody? 
or Brian just wants to do a quick overview of yeah, yeah if you could major just changes over your top priorities okay. just so the region knows when somebody asks hey why is Colorado Springs doing this this is important to Colorado Springs right now right right so um, so this list that we first developed last fall um, was basically pulled from the 2040 regional transit plan which is a part of PPACG's regional transportation plan um, with a few additions, um, you know, bus stop or a, a uh, bus storage expansion facility, um, another transfer center. So there were a few tweaks added to the to the fall version. And what I did with this was um, the top three projects are um, the three new projects that we submitted to PPACG for the 2040. Five regional transportation plan. So I thought, try to be as consistent with everything that's going on. So I, I added those three projects in there. Um, Mountain Metro also has an internal capital improvement program. Um, we kind of looked at that list and kind of looked for the larger projects because originally this TDP was supposed to be for high dollar capital bondable projects for the for the proposition 110 so we, we looked at some of our higher cost projects so if you go down um, part way down the, the first sheet you'll see that we have um, solar panel installations on the remaining bus shelters that we have that do not have solar panels but also uh, all the facilities that are part of our transit campus um, bus lift replacement this special parallelogram bus lift is designed to pick up buses without damaging them. Um, fare system upgrades, we just did a fare study, um, finished it last year, and this is to help implement that fare study with a new fare system, mobile ticketing, and all of that. Um, um, some enterprise asset management software, uh, we just completed a downtown circulator study a few months ago. Um, it's kind of put in here as two components. There's a capital component <coughs> for purchasing electric vehicles. Um, six vehicles would be needed for that. Um, some roadway alignments and restriping. Um, bus platforms, wayfinding. And then, um, so another question of mine is, um, some of these projects we kind of wanted to keep consistent with. The CDOT's pipeline of projects is supposed to be like a, a, a 10 year horizon. Is that right? So for downtown circulator, I, I put in um, what's well, about $1.9 million per year for operations. So the 19.5 million is assuming 10 years of operation. So that's kind of what we did. So. Uh, most of it's the, uh, the same as what we saw in the fall, but um, we did add some projects to be consistent with what we submitted for the 2045 plan and um, our internal capital improvement program. Any questions for Brian? All right, Shane, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the list identified here again for 267. Um, Again, the, the way the funding, my understanding, will be allocated is around $500 million to the state um, um, for a four-year period. We've already finished up year one. So our contributions or our projects that we're cons considering for year two, three, and four, um, what we're trying to capture with this list is what is PPACG's priorities um, within this community. And so the, I'll say in the top um, colored portion, as what CDOT has identified as our immediate recommended needs. Um, and then the bottom um, gray portion are projects that um, for your consideration. And what we're looking for is what, what is the priority that PPACG would, would like to see. Um, I would suggest, and kind of how we have it um, prioritized now, research and powers is, I think, pretty important to a lot of the community. And so that's why we've listed it as our first priority within this this um, MPO and then the second one being the um, 
the uh, military grant project that we've been pursuing for about um, $25 million. That's the I-25 um, surface treatment south and um, south academy and state highway 94 projects. Um, beyond that, in my apologies, I listed state highway 115 Rock Creek Bridge. I wasn't exactly sure where the MPO boundaries cut off, but it sounds like this is completely outside of this MPO, so that should be taken off of this list for you guys. But outside of that, that's where we're, um, we definitely want to have your input um, as to what the uh, priorities um, for this area should be. Um, the focus for what we would like to spend the funding on is threefold, pri threefold primarily. It's asset management, safety, and mobility. Um, this list was somewhat developed in mind with projects that were greater than $5 million. And so you'll see a, a variety of projects. We try to capture different locations within the MPO um, for your consideration. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions for Shane? Does anybody have any comments for Shane? Do you also want to talk about um, the Transportation Commission and um, how they're going to make that selection or how we don't know how they're going to make that selection? So I, I don't know how they're going to make the selection. I don't know how that, but the, the timing of this is, I believe um, we were to submit our lists in November um, for their consideration in November. Um, they've bonded, or they're, they've um, allocated the year two funding and they're going to bond it in January of 2020. Um, and so they want to have a list identified and for the priority for the state in November, um, considering all the different MPOs and, and, and um, TPRs. Um, as far as how they will decide, I don't know at this time. I think they're actually making some decisions today, and I don't know if uh, Catherine or Woody has any additional information on that, but I believe that's still to be decided. Yeah. That's basically, I just wanted everyone to know that we don't know exactly how that's going to occur yet. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay. And so that's why this is an action item is because we do need to make sure that we take this through our committees and get it approved in October so that we can get to this to the Transportation Commission um, by their deadline. So I just wanted to point that out. Brian? So just one other question, Catherine. So, you know, we're also in the middle of our 2045 regional transportation, uh, regional transit plan. So out of that process, that's again going to be folded into your plan. You know, we may have um, a new project list or a modified project list that comes out of that plan. I guess we'll get an opportunity to, again to update the TDP with that new list um, sometime later. It's my understanding that yes, okay. we will have another next year. We'll be able to op uh, update it as well. Um, I'm not sure if we'd be able to update it sooner than that. I'd have to check with them. I don't know, Wendy. Do you have any? idea on the transit side? I don't know for sure either because the transit money doesn't work along the same lines as the engineering um, project money. It'll be two different processes. So I would say that if you have an update, I'm sure that we can send it up at the point in time when you have it ready because there's some flexibility in your process that we don't have in the engineering side. Okay. All right. Thank you. But I'll, I'll, I'll contact them and check. I want to um, just real quick differentiate what the second document attached is. This is our planned construction and projects that we have. Um, 2019 is either under construction or have been completed for construction. Um, and then our planned for construction in year 2020. And then uh, uh, for 2021 um, and beyond um, projects that are currently being developed and designed. So that's to be that this is not as this will not be sent up to the TC. So I, I have one comment and we can get the group to weigh in. I think we've all heard that interim space command, at least that's what I'm gonna call it, is in El Paso County for the moment. Does anybody have any interest in moving up the interchange or the access at State Highway twenty one and airport? I know that was a big thing eight years ago when we were on the board and we changed it to I-25 Cimarron instead of that location, but I didn't know if Colorado Springs or the county had heard any 
rumblings that had made it to their departments about moving that up. Somehow I have in Fountain, but I figured I'd just ask. Tim, have you heard anything? <clears throat> what I've heard is um, there actually is, well, they've approached the city for um, improving the access to the north, okay. to the north gate. Okay. Um, but they have also expressed interest in the, the west gate also. But um, related to the um, space command, it would be the north gate is, is the primary. Okay. So, so we're okay leaving it exactly where it is because you haven't heard anybody's dying for that interchange at the moment. They'd rather have the norm. If I were to summarize. Oh, well, they would love to have the interchange. Right. They'd love to have both, but yeah. they're okay if it's, it's on the gray and isn't in the blue and white, you think? I don't know if I'd say that. <laughs> of course, they would like for it to be advanced. Right. Well, and that's why I'm asking is, is there a reason that we would want to advance it? I'm not an economic development, but it might help mm -hmm. it, would we that have, stay in this region. Would we have to slip another project? Or can we advance it without slipping? Um, so it would be identified um, above the Colorado Springs ramp metering phase two project and above the Fillmore to Garden of God's concrete overlay auxiliary rain lanes project. And so at least from this list that has been developed, that's, that's really where you'd end up s sliding it in. Can we put it below the $6 million project since it, that $6 million project would probably be likely funded first? Sure. And that way we know that that one gets taken care of and then we put the big dollar one after that one? Yeah. Just so it looks like it's a priority for the region when somebody gets a hold of that list and they go through the process that's undefined, we well, can at least see we said yes. Well, let me ask this. Is this Fillmore to Garden of the Gods auxiliary, that's X cell, D cell all the way? So that is, that is, and you'll look at the price tag, $42 million. That's replacing that bridge at Sinton Road. That is yeah. an A cell, D cell connecting Garden of the Gods and Fillmore, both directions. I'm not sure that the interchange would suffer. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking if anybody thinks that's yeah. going to make or break keeping Space Command here. And I guess we'll say we'll go with this list, and if the board thinks differently, they can rearrange the list. How's that? Victoria? Okay, um, question time. So are the ones funded, the ones in the color above the green and everything else is not funded, or is this whole list sort of funded in the 267? This is not funded in 267 yeah. at all. Okay. Um, the colored portion on the top half above the green is what identified as what CDOT has identified as their immediate needs, if you will. The gray below, and my apologies, I didn't explain the columns very well. The very left column we've identified, you'll have to see two, three, five, nine, and 11. That represents um, the ranked priority region wide um, that we've so far developed. Um, the um, the list below um, has not, except for two, where we've got 13 and 20, has not been ranked. And so the way it is sorted in the gray is by corridor. So the first being State Highway 21, you have about four different projects there. Um, US 24, both east and west, 83, I-25, 67, and 85. Um, I would say for right now, the, the blue is is really crossing our fingers, we get these funded. It's the best way I'm gonna, I can describe it at this time. Unless we get the build grant and then three is funded? Correct. Okay. Any that other is correct. The build grant was for $25 million. correct. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, what was that? Just any more questions for Shane? Yes. Um, the project number five, the Rock Creek Bridge replacement. Yes. I'll get it in CFR. <laughs> My apologies again. That one should not be on this list. I, I wasn't exactly sure where that MPO boundary um, stopped on State Highway 115. Yeah, he said take it off. And it's a high priority for the Central Front Range, so I'm pretty sure it'll get funded through there. Any other questions for Shane? So I have a question for Brian. Oh. Sorry. Um, 
So the TDP, um, so as I said, this was developed last fall in anticipation of the ballot measure. Um, you know, assuming that if it passed that there would be additional dollars through the passage of the, of the ballot measure to fund these projects. But so this list now, I mean, is, is this assuming um, state dollars through DTR or is it is it just that we have our ducks in a row for transit priorities for federal and state dollars or? I'm going to have to defer. I'm not sure on the yeah. DTD. I would My say apologies. yes. <laughs> the second one? No, for, uh, yes to all of it. So okay. if Senate Bill 1 money is available, then it would be uh, eligible off this list. If there's 267 money that goes to transit for, in some way, shape, or form, it would be eligible. And then you'd have the regular programs, the faster and so forth. Okay. But primarily, this list is for state for state dollars, not not federal. I would yes, say that federal. this point, this is if this is the priority for Mountain Metro, this would be what would be updating your ten-year priority. Okay, that's okay. what I would say. Okay, right. that way we have a good starting point from 2040 to 2045 moving forward. Okay. All right, thank you. So when you have the updated information that you're talking about, it's mm -hmm. important to bring that back here and then get that to us so that we can make sure that that gets to DTR. Okay. okay? Yep, thank you. I do want to clarify, um, none of these projects are funded currently. Um, there is not any obligation to currently to fund any of these projects. And so that's that's where we are developing what would be your first priority in this MPO to fund out the gate and right now what we've identified um, would be research and powers um, if, if additional funding came our way would be number one and then on down the, the blue list and then again if there are projects that you would like to see prioritized higher um, that's what we've tried to come up with in this great list. So since we're taking out the Rock Creek, can we move 20 up behind the $42 million project, Fillmore Garden of the Gods? I agree. Is that be it? So it's at least in the colored section? Okay. Well, thank you. Well, if we're going to do that. Can I be at the top of the gray section then with the 24 East Garrett widening to Stapleton? For the county, that's a huge issue for us. We have backups there every single day, and long backups there every single day. Yes. Thank you. And just a nod to it, but I think $103 million for an HOV lane on I-25 is probably not our top priority for the region. <laughs> Just say. <laughs> Just wanted to include everything. <laughs> I mean, if they get all the top ones funded and we have to fight over the order of the gray ones, I would be ecstatic, but I'm not worried about it. I mean, we could get each get a little piece of the I-25 pie, but if, if we get all of those, I'll, I'll be, again, ecstatic, and we'll, we'll fight over it next year. So... My action item will be to revise this list as is, taking out 115, but filling in underneath the Fillmore to Garden of the Gods would be State Highway 21 and Airport, and then behind that would be US 24 East Widening Garrett to Stapleton. Is that correct? Yes. And that would be an item that we take to the board as a suggestion from TAC. So we'll just give them what you gave originally, and then the suggestion from TAC would be how we would handle that. Going to change around anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the whole less. point of this committee is to give them our recommendation, and then if they don't like our recommendation, they can change it. Right? Okay. Otherwise, they just get eyes glaze over. And okay. Right. Okay. I'm with Victoria. Just that, 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 they trust us to give them what we recommend, and then if they don't like it, they can politically move it. Right. Sounds good. Can that's we get your meeting easier? <laughs> Sounds good. Can we get a motion? that effect whoever understands that Tim or Victoria Go, Tim. 
Hold on. I had to do the last hard run without my glasses, and Brandy made me read it twice, so I'm gonna shot now. Okay. <clears throat> Recommend approval of the of the transit development list presented by Brian. Yeah. And roadway development prioritized program list with the following change that State Highway 115 Rock Creek Bridge replacement be removed and the um, airport DDI interchange be raised above the, into the colored section and that the US 24 East widening Garrett to Stapleton also be raised into the um, colored section. No, it's the top of the gray. Top of the gray. With a, with a three or four or five or whatever number. Yeah, so it's a 13 sitting right there or whatever. It would be number six for the PPACG. Perfect. Thank you. Second. Anybody? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. So, may I ask a question? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, in the gray, now the to-be-determined uh, list, what would be the next time we would see those? Or will we know whether we need to argue over... Well, let Shane answer that. Ranking the, the rest of the gray. So my understanding, and Catherine, I'll let you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there is a long-range plan discussion coming up winter, spring. Is that correct? Oh, well, we just went through our long, uh, the, the no MPO's long-range plan, and okay. so. I thought there was another up to 2045 coming up in March. Um, I mean, for I'm, prioritization or? Yeah. No, we uh, okay. have our 2045 list already um, kind of selected, selected and up. in January okay. it should be approved, but we don't have a new um, on discussion on that. Okay. So Sally, I would say if money falls out of the sky, Catherine will convene a meeting and you, we will all discuss what comes next, unless the board has some burning desire. But generally, like I said, if we can get the ones on the top funded, that would be a small miracle. If that happens and there's more money, then because they're gray-ish, unless we have to have that money immediately, Catherine will create another list, we will have another meeting, we will then discuss the items in gray. I thought I heard Shane say that there's $500 million. Statewide. Is, oh, statewide. Statewide. Not oh, if it was us, that, okay. the, totally different, totally different spreadsheet. Okay. Statewide. Thank you. So yes, that would be a, a different discussion since it's in our long range plan that doesn't really guarantee money or anything, but there would be right. a separate okay. so discussion. So these go and compete now with Correct. the rest of the state. Correct. Right. Got Which it. is why if we got managed to get all of that, I think that would be a miracle, but that's okay. what Shane's supposed to. And I would say that not only are large projects competing for that pot of money and funding, but we're also, there's also rural service treatment, asset management. Um, competition going on, um, obviously transit. There, there's a lot of, a lot of hands to the pot, if you will. So, right. So again, that's why CDOT really has our top two, and if we can get those funded, that would be great. If like, if we have extra money and more of them get funded, it's helpful, but not likely. Any other questions on that? Okay. Seven B tip project obligation deadlines. Catherine. Okay, so over the last few months we've been discussing the TIP project obligation deadlines for the June 2020 <laughs> deadline for projects that have been rolling forward for the last, for some years now. And so we've been discussing setting timelines and deadlines for projects um, to make progress. And if they didn't meet that progress, then we would discuss how we handle um, reallocating or possibly reprogramming that money to projects that need it in order to meet the deadline as well. And so we've held meetings with everyone that has projects that are within that threshold of the June 2020 deadline. And we have created, um, based on the TAC recommendation, we've created the spreadsheet that has been handed out to you that has all the pretty colors on this 11 by 17 document. Uh, it's kind of small, so I'll, I don't think I have it. Up, but um, so based on those meetings with CDOT and the members and uh, PPACG, we have items that are listed in green, and those are considered progressing and no hangups to meet the deadline. We have an orange um, projects that are progressing 
but they do have some hang-ups, so it's possible they might not meet those deadlines. And then we have yellow are the ones that are not progressing um, in time to meet the deadlines for um, the June 2020. And so we have all the information laid out for you, talking about where they are in their project, how much money they need, and um, what those exact hang-ups are. And so I don't know if, Patty, I'm going to put you on the spot if you have any comments on this spreadsheet or any other updates, but um, we were bringing this to you for a discussion and then possible action next month to talk about um, some people giving back the money to the pot and then reallocating those to other projects and how we might handle that. No? Okay. So, no, there's a lot here on this table. Does anyone want to discuss any projects in particular, or do you just want to go into the um, discussion about how we handle maybe yellow projects or, or orange projects if they don't progress, if those hangups don't progress in time by the next um, month cycle, which we feel like if you haven't addressed those hangups, if you're in the orange, um, then you probably will not progress in the time frame needed as well. I'll ask, I'll, I'll ask a question. Go ahead. <laughs> That's right. So, Patty, um, so our routes one and seven, eight and nine. I mean, I was in the room when we had that meeting with our city engineering staff, and the impression I got from that walking away is that we were, we were okay. Did, did something happen past that, or, or um, has this been so, communicated back to them? So we were looking at, I think at that meeting, we just basically stated that if we were to get funding or administrative documents in to get um, IGA and IGA requested and get going on those, we could possibly see some progress. Uh, we didn't know if design was going to be needed. If that was the case, we would be maybe just obligating for design. Um, we do not have IGA request documents for Route 9. We only have them in for Route 8 and 1 and 7. So we're still progressing with those. It's just but we're just barely starting. So okay. if you want a design fate, or if you're going to require a design set of plans, we could maybe obligate some of that money for design and work that at a steady pace instead of trying to hurry up and obligate for construction by next summer. So one of the um, things that we were looking at is maybe you get money ordered for design and then return money for cons return the rest of the money that would be considered for construction back to the pool to give other projects a chance to use that money and then your projects can work at a steady pace mm -hmm. okay so um i mean there were a couple other project managers for these has that been communicated to them or um, are you working with them directly or yeah, we're working with each at a case-by-case -case basis, depending on where they are. I know Manitou Avenue was one, and, and I'm not just thinking about like Colorado Springs. It, Manitou Avenue, we, we discussed that possibility as well, just awarding for design, and then returning construction funds. Um, so it, it it was just as it was coming up, so, and depending on where those projects were as well. Because some of the projects we haven't hung up with right away, and mm -hmm. there doesn't seem to be, you know, it's depending on the property owners when mm -hmm. they're going to sign up. Right, right. So, I believe those projects are being designed in-house, though? Which ones? The three transit projects. Well, we had been asking them. We didn't receive any responses from the project managers that were assigned to them. 
Route 9, we've been asking for stuff since March, and we just, I think we just got an email back last week about it. Yeah. So we, we've been getting nothing. About the design status? Yeah, like if they were going to require a design phase or they thought they were going to need right away. What do we need so that we can put that money aside and then, you know, like I said, work at a steady pace with design and then recompete or re get back in line for construction funds? Okay, it, it, and I may be thinking of a different transit projects, but I, I thought they were these, but okay. we, I, maybe we should check on that. So where you see the pending on the red line up there where it says IGA, that is where we have received um, the, the documents that we need in order to proceed with requesting an IGA from CDOT headquarters. So pending just means that they've been submitted and we forwarded all that information to the business office so that they could make that request. And keep in mind that IGA requests take weeks because there is just one person for all of Region 2. Okay. So I guess, <clears throat> so these projects were originally, um, some of our bus stop improvement projects we flex directly to the FTA mm -hmm. and um, and those are the ones that we kind of design and yeah, implement and you're, in-house. You're pretty much done right. with some of these. Right, yeah. yeah. You, you but these, these were kind of given to our city engineering folks Correct. like Kevin and Mike and Ryan, I guess. So I guess I'm just asking, do you need me to do anything or have you unless you're been the in PM for these projects? No, because okay. we're working directly with the PMs. To, All right. To so they know where they stand, though. Okay. All right. And okay. we copy Mike Chavez. Okay. You know, with the with the PM, so he's okay. he's aware of it. He's very well aware okay. of the communication. Okay. All that right. We've been attempting. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So if I read this correctly, those seem like the biggest ones that are trying to make it to the finish line, whereas sure. Canyon... And, and again, I mean, if we can just get a design phase going and earmark that money for design and you can work, you know, you can work steadily on it instead of trying to be rushed, you know, you're still, you still have your project, you're still working on it, and we're just trying to get to construction not as hurry as before. So right. there, there is that option is to return, you know, once we figure out how much you need for design and or right away, you know, return some of that money for to the, back to the pool. Are you going to work on your end, Brian, to figure no. all that out, you and Tim? No. Okay. So that, that one seems like at least it'll make it halfway and then between Patty and the city of Colorado Springs to figure out how much money is or isn't coming back to the pool. Is Monument giving back their money? I have Mon will Monument, give back. Monument has indicated for the pro Monument Beacon that they will be returning those funds. Okay. So was there a <coughs> dollar amount on that at all, Patty, or do you know it? Yeah, so if you look at it, I did not put that in there. I think it was like a hundred and twenty thousand. Okay. I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, the monument beacon ones yeah. are coming back. Yeah. It says thirty-three thousand. Oh, I'm sorry, thirty-three thousand. Yeah. yeah. It says that somewhere. Oh, uh, yeah, mine is. It's from the tip. Catherine has a secret spreadsheet that none of us have. So okay. It's, it's only thirty-three thousand. It is only okay. thirty-three. Yeah. yeah. They have another um, sidewalk project that is. The larger one, the 215, but yeah. And then the Canyon Avenue Bridge Rehab from Manitou, is that? I have written a memo of the chain saying there's no reason. One, one we can't do it at the time, and two, it isn't necessary. So uh, I'll have to go in front of council sometime in October, but I'm pretty sure it's 
Okay, so you're going to take the 300000 and then return the 492 No, I think, I think he's saying the whole project. You're going to give it all back? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so the whole stop. 792 and I and I don't remember. It's a local match of 100 and some thousand. Yeah, I mean, if you. Yeah, 642,000 Whatever. in federal. But even if he took the 300, it would be a slightly less, but still more than he wants to spend, I'm sure. Yeah, that one for federal is 642,345. That would be returned. Super 675 coming back so far. Which is good. I, I like tiny numbers. I don't, so far, we're all getting along. I expect some favors under some. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can <laughs> see that. Next two months, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so far, that's a lot easier than I imagined, and I'm going to throw this on the table for all of the orange people. We gave ourselves a deadline of the end of October, but our meeting is at our meeting. There's still two more weeks in October. So, is there any way we can have all of October and then? see where we end up at the end of October or do we have to do it by the TAC meeting in October? To fit it within the deadline written out in the memo, it would need to be October, but... Like the month end by Halloween? Um, it would need to be the TAC okay. meeting October in, in order to reallocate those funds in a, in a quick, timely manner. Okay, I so, guess we'll see what happens between now and a month from now. So what we're proposing for the next meeting is um, checking back on the projects, specifically the ones that aren't um, progressing or potentially might not progress in time. So we're proposing to bring back to you projects in three separate columns or groups. So the first one would be group one. They, they stay the same. They're moving forward. We're good. Group two are the group of projects that need more money in order to meet the deadline or if they have a scope change in order to meet within the time frame or within the funding that they have, they would be in group two. And then group three would be fund the projects that we suggest come back or return their funds to the, to the pool to go to those projects that need additional funds. So those would be um, suggested by PPACG and CDOT. Um, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have to give them back, but it would be something that's a recommendation to return those funds after we've discussed further with each of the jurisdictions. Um, along those lines in the column that for groups that need more money and then the ones that would be returning, there are people, are there um, jurisdictions that have uh, given us concern that if they return some of their funds for certain projects that they wouldn't get that money back for their other projects and if we um, group the projects in this way, then it would not necessarily, it, it's kind of a guarantee that your grouping of projects would get some sort of funding out of that allocation that you've returned, from the program that you've returned. So it's a way to make sure that you do get money for the projects you need money for if you return other projects that are not progressing in a timely manner, if that makes sense. So is that another round of meetings, or do we just inundate Patty with emails the uh, week before the TAC meeting? I think it can be done over the phone unless we're not getting um, back what we need. Does that sound appropriate, Patty? And Junior? <laughs> okay. Phone slash email conversations, because now I officially know the packet has to be done the Thursday before. So that really isn't very long because that's the week of the board meeting. That's yes. three weeks. Yes. It's coming up quickly. Yes. Any questions? So I, I did just I did just confirm that they're being designed in house. So this so these projects for routes one and seven, eight and nine, are those all just going to be funds to be used for construction then? 
Um, I believe so. I th the, there may be some right of way or easements needed to be acquired with the money. Okay. I'd need to coordinate that with the project managers, but um, I do know they were design was in house. Route eight is the only one I know of that has um, easements and stuff. I believe there's like 17 or something easements that that project needs. Is that Fillmore Street? Uh, I'm not sure which one that yeah, is. Yeah, I don't remember. Okay. Eight is um, cash, I think. Okay. Because we just added a right away phase to that project. You d oh, that's right. Okay. And there was, I believe, on the list there was like 17 or something easements that needed to be acquired. Okay. So, one other comment I'd like to make is that we do have the tip call for projects coming up, and I brought this up at the workshop yesterday, but I also wanted to bring it up that we do have the tip call for projects for years 23 and 24. So another suggestion is to ensure that you are keeping that priority list along with the priority list you have um, with the current tip and these projects. And if you return the funds for this year, maybe, and you have a couple years, you can reapply for the funds for those 23 and 24. Um, just to keep that as another option so that you don't feel like you can't return those funds. But also we just wanted to make sure you have your, your full list of priorities together because we do still have projects in 21 and 22 that are, uh, need to be progressing as well. So if you feel like you can't progress your projects that are currently supposed to be moving, uh, maybe you consider removing the other projects later in year and move it back into a year that um, you have funding elsewhere. So there's multiple ways you, we need to ensure that we have all of our priorities together for this new call and for this um, June 2020 deadline process that we're doing. So. Well, related to what you just mentioned, so, so if we were to say split a project into two phases or push out a phase into um, an out year or, or one of the 23, 24 funded years, we still have to compete with the rest of the region though, right? Yes. Okay. Unless the region voted on a measure that came up with a different process for those, for um, prioritizing those funds. Sorry, Victoria. <laughs> it's okay, I know. You were wallowing in self-pity over there, weren't you? <laughs> I'm just wondering how to make this presentable next month. Well, and, okay, if we don't know until October, mid-October, which projects are going to get returned and how much money is available, I have to go and take my grant applications to our Board of County Commissioners. It takes me two weeks to get on the schedule for that. And these are then due November 1st. I have like a half a day to do applications and get it to our board then. Okay. Don't worry, you're not getting any more money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little concerned about that timing. Is anybody else concerned about that? I know you all don't have to take your applications to your boards, but I do. What would make you feel comfortable? Two more weeks. So no, no, no. Can we push the deadline for the TIP applications two weeks? Oh. Well, I have those um, set, or the, that date set, so that we can take it through TAC, the prioritization list through TAC and the board, um, November, December, so we can move forward. But um, we do have probably a month of flexibility on that, so I can... Probably well, and, it back. and honestly, I have the same concern about the multimodal one, mm -hmm. given that we don't have an application, we're not sure what the priorities are, and all of it, like throwing all of these together is a lot of projects for a one-person shop. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll talk with John to confirm, but I, yes. I don't think it will be an issue moving the call for projects back, okay. or the due date at least. I appreciate that consideration. Thank you. Okay, um, the only thing I was saying is next time, I don't think we need this many details, we'll probably need all the names of the projects in your lovely color coding 
and the amounts of money so that we have an idea of how much money needs to be reallocated. So something that will help us do that so we don't have to all do math on the fly. So, and, and if John's okay, if you want to just combine the 330 and the 792 since he's given it all back, then we at least know we have that bucket to start with. And then we'll know more about Mountain Munch Rose. And then all the orange ones will have to shine in the next three weeks in some way, shape, or form. And we'll, we'll go from there. Any other comments on this information item? Okay, well, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Brian, and I will be taking off early. Sorry about that, but thank you all for coming. Thanks, Brandy. So that leaves us with uh, item 7A, Multimodal Options Fund, call for projects. Catherine? All right. So as we mentioned last month, there is a multimodal option funds that we've um, been given the opportunity to have $6.5 million for the region of St Senate Bill uh, 18 funds regarding um, any their, uh, sorry, their multimodal option fund funding. And so the region has $6.5 million to spend, and we would like to do a separate call for projects apart from the TIP call for projects because this is Senate, our state money and we want to ensure that we spend it as quickly as possible so that it doesn't disappear or <laughs> potentially go away if, um, if it gets reallocated somewhere else. Um, so we wanted to do a separate call and that's what this is so that it would be approved sooner than the TIP uh, call for projects that would be in about March or April, but then that doesn't go into effect until October. And so this would put this listing sooner. And so we would like to do a separate call for projects on these multimodal option funds. So the goals of that program is to benefit seniors um, by making aging a place more feasible, benefit residents of the rural areas, providing them with flexible options, um, enhance mobility, um, and provide safe routes to school. And so the projects that are eligible for this type of funding are the fixed route and on-demand transit, uh, transportation demand management programs, multimodal mobility projects enabled by new technology, um, multimodal transportation studies, or bicycle pedestrian projects. Um, one big area here, though, is that it, there is a 50% match for all of the projects, and it can be any source other than the multimodal option fund. So you can use um, federal monies, but uh, just remember if you use federal uh, match, then you do have to make sure that you meet federal regulations, but you can use other kinds of local or um, regional funding. So we would like to send out a, a form that's similar to the TIP application. Essentially, it would be just kind of a subset of that application and prioritization of the projects. So we'd like you to start thinking about what projects you'd like to submit, if any, or if you have any ideas of maybe doing a grouping of projects. Um, projects submitted are that are not consistent with our long-range plan, we'd like you to discuss those with us just so that we make sure that they're still um, fitting kind of within that consistent format. Um, and then priority should be given to projects that can spend that program fund as soon as possible. So we would like to program this money sooner rather than later, but if we want to spread it over a couple of years or a few years, we can do that as well um, if, we don't, if we can't program $6.5 all in one year. Um, so the proposed timeline for this call for projects specifically is September for announcement, October, November for uh, open to coincide with the TIP call for projects, and then November 6th going to the TIP, um, the project workshop, the same one that we have for the TIP. December for inclusion into the current TIP goes to the boards, and then um, January of 2020 the projects can begin. And we can, and that's a proposed timeline, so we can move that back to give you a little more time as well if we need to, because um, I know we have some concern with that, so it's fine to move that as well. So I will be sending out um, documents for this call in addition to the call that starts October 1 to coincide with that other, the TIP 1 process. So, Catherine, um, November 6th, that's, so it's, it's a joint TIP multimodal options fund prioritization workshop. Yes. So we'll, we'll do we'll TIP projects and then uh, MMOF projects and 
yes. have everything. Okay. Right. And if if we prefer to do a separate um, workshop, I can I can separate that out if we feel that's too much for that pro for that workshop. Yeah. Um, that's fine. This was a this is kind of a new <laughs> funding source that we've been provided, and so it's a new process that we have to try to work around. So I'm we can be flexible with how we need to handle this specific funding source. I would almost like us to have all the brain damage at one time. Oh, no, I was thought you were going <laughs> to say split the two. Oh, well. <laughs> I really don't want, don't want all the brain yeah, I damage. I mean, if, if, if we're in that mode of prioritizing projects, um, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever the, what everybody else wants, um, we could work our, that out. Our thought on the prioritizing it together is that if we don't have or we likely won't have enough money to fund all the projects that are being proposed or applying, so we can at least consider this as part of that um, prioritization process and say, hey, we still have these monies as available as well for specifically for the multimodal <coughs> portions. But that's, okay. we can leave it up to you. Okay? Co coordinating one calendar to, I mean, one date also on the calendar is much easier than finding two gaps. Um, would these funds be? They have the same tip requirements of like being having to be encumbered the same year. That, so would these pro be programmed over? I thought I heard you say like in multiple years. It could be, or it could be all in one. We have, we don't have a lot of uh, uh, rules that we've been given and provided from CDOTs. We're still waiting to get back more, um, kind of the regulations and really the strict deadlines or any of that, we haven't received them from the state. And so I'm still waiting to hear from that. So that's another reason why we would like to program these and say that we're going to spend them and get them spent is so that we don't get the money um, reallocated elsewhere. But I don't know. And Wendy's still waiting to hear back more as well. So I, she might have more information, but probably not. <laughs> we had a meeting earlier um, this week on this process, and I don't know any more than Catherine just told you. So um, at this point, Catherine has gone through and set up an application. The only thing that is most important is that you meet the criteria that's in the, the law, and I can make sure that that is given to Catherine what we have so far. Um, so that you meet those re requirements. I mean, but uh, Brian, this is a great opportunity to go after funds for if you're not dealing with TABOR limits. That's another thing. So as Catherine said, that it could be um, moved into next year so that you're not dealing with TABOR limits. So you could ask for it to be a January project. Hmm. That way you're, you're not, and you can have your demand, your on-demand um, hmm. benefit. Um, and I mean, there's a, we have projects all over the place that we have needs for. So, and, and the only catch is that it's the 50-50. Well, and that's a big local match to come up with. And, you know, we're sort of already in our funding um, for next year. Yeah. And so even if we get a project, then we don't have it budgeted with, that, with this timeline. Right. And that's problematic. We are up against our Tabor issue for this year. It may very well be the same for next year, but I don't know that yet. And we don't even have all the rules yet. So and, the, I, and we realize that and the budget. You can get an IGA in, you know, in, in January for, for starting in 2020. I just want us to be realistic with, and I totally get wanting to use it so we don't lose it, and I agree with that, but we also have to work with the logistics of, of all of our organizations and, you know, getting something budgeted right now for money that we don't know until January we're, whether we're going to get is just not going to happen. So we have the money and the money belongs to PPACG. That $6 million is, it belongs here. So there's, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to be taken away. Uh, from what I've heard, the only requirement we have is to do a report out to the legislature yearly. So there's going to be a process that we're working on to make sure that that happens. So with that being said, one of the things that could go in that report is the fact that we let the money go too late in the year 
and that budgets were already formulated, no way to come up with 50% match. That's not your fault. That's our fault. That's something we have to take responsibility for and, and deal with. But if there's any way to get match money speculatory into a budget, that money is available and there to go. So it, it belongs to this region, and it, it's not going anywhere. So it's not, and do we have a deadline for spending it like we do this 2020? No. The, there's no deadline that's been written sure into the bill. Are you sure you want to do all your brain damage all at once now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was going to ask, do we want to move this schedule back to coincide with the TIP again and have it more of a October of 2020 starting deadline where that's the new the, when the new TIF starts, or is that too soon still? Or? You decide. What do you guys think? Am I the only one with this concern? <laughs> and doing um, it all together would be maybe easier and make more sense, And but I'm happy to it, it push it. It is if you or, have, you know, 100 people in your department, yeah. <laughs> but we don't. <laughs> Yeah, I honestly didn't didn't think of that until you said it. Um, yeah, it is budget season, um, but um, and I'm nobody's really raised it internally that I've heard of. But yeah, I, I could see it being an issue. I mean, other than like what Wendy said, if you could put a you know a line item in there, if, if you have some project scoped out. That you know the cost, and you could put the the fifty percent local match as a line item. And we can do it. that, but the problem is, is that it bumps something real. Then, yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You only have so much budget, and so if I put a speculative item in the in the budget, something real had to had to go out. Mm -hmm. But you could do a budget amendment, right? I mean, if if that item was that project was not approved. And you could use that 50% match on your next line item that would just move up. I mean, with a budget amendment or something, I, I'm not sure. No, it's it's possible. Um, yeah. It's just yeah. not the ideal timing and not having all the rules, not having an application, not knowing whether or not we got funded in TIP or in TAP mm -hmm. versus, mm -hmm. or the TIP money versus this money. I mean, obviously you want 80% money, not 50-50 money. Mm -hmm. So if you got funded in that one, then you're not going to apply for it in this one. But this way, you're going to apply for your projects in both categories in hopes that one of them gets funded, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm struggling a little with it, especially I mean, I, I had a sit down with the county engineer today and I went through and she's asking me all these questions and this is all the info I have. What are the criteria? What, what's the scoring? What's the application? How difficult? And all I can say is I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. So it's just, it's hard in this very uncertain environment because we've not been provided the information. Mm -hmm. No offense to BPACG, it's not you. Like, I don't have <laughs> but, any more than that. <laughs> yeah, I know you gave me everything yeah. you had, but it's it's just yeah. not enough to get the project going. So I guess we could throw it out there. I, talk, I guess I'm going to ask Wendy if this is, seems like a reasonable thing as programming it for maybe 21, 22, 23, Holding off, or I obviously we don't want to hold off too long. But if we hold it off for a, you know six months or so or something, I don't know. I truly believe that that's kind of the direction that we're going to have to use because if you don't have the match money, all we do is set you up for failure to be on the spreadsheet again, right? I mean, honestly, we have to be able to have the match money, and if you don't have the match money, you can't build the project. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, I'm going to make sure that that information gets funneled back up through my supervisor to the RTD and then have the RTD send something back to, to DTD on this because it is a problem and that's the way it's going to have to go. Okay. Okay? It's not an action item, fortunately, so we don't have to make any decisions, but maybe having, finding out, setting that up, getting a little bit more information. You send us information when you get it from CDOT 
and maybe we go from there. Okay. By the way, I, uh, I work in DTD, so I'll also convey this. Um, I report what happens at these meetings to my superiors, and uh, so I can coordinate with Wendy and we can make sure we get the message across yeah. that people want more information. That'd be great. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. I'm not clear as to how this money will be contracted. Is it the same process with PPA, uh, with CDOT? For an IGA and mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah, we just we just threw a bunch of months in there, didn't we? Yes, we yeah. did. <laughs> okay, so we'll hold off on this call for projects, but just with the reminder of keep that the, keep it in mind that these fundings, this fund is here and can be used, but we'll hold off until we hope hear more, and hopefully. It'll be sooner rather than later. <laughs> oh, and by the way, in terms of a process, I, I know at this point um, what I've heard is that CDOT really just wants the MPOs to come up with a process for themselves that they can live with. But obviously you need a framework to work against with us. But that is something that I have heard. So in case you want to come up with something, share it with CDOT, and then we can figure out more details as well. Okay. So that was something that was conveyed to me. Okay. And I think it, it would be nice to know, I mean, if if we're the outlier, if we're the only ones who are having these issues, or if these same feelings are being felt across the state, uh, you know, that maybe they need to look at. The that That's exactly the why it, we yeah. got nowhere in the meeting, because that's exactly what the issue was. Okay. So it isn't just you. I mean, it's 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 everybody. So the only entity that I'm aware of that has done anything with this funding is Dr. Cog, because they had projects already in the hopper that they could send this money to and, and get them funded because they have match money, mm -hmm. and it was within the budgeting time and so forth. So the rest of the state is struggling trying to figure out what to do with this. And if you think you're struggling, think about what I – we need to do, me, Patty, and Junior, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the shell with the, the TPRs because the TPR folks have to do the same thing that you're doing. And um, it's a lot of burden to put it on someone. And, and the chair of the TPRs have a job. They have a full-time job. So who's going to do that? Who's going to make that call? Who's going to take those applications? Who's going to? So I, we still have that, that to deal with. Yeah. So. Um, at least you're in a better place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And part of my concern is that I have to do these both. I'm the only jurisdiction in both the TPR and the MPO, so mm -hmm. I go through everything we do here twice. <laughs> so. That makes you quicker and more efficient, <laughs> right? <laughs> it makes me more tired and yeah. more wrinkled yeah. as, I, as the day goes. <laughs> All right. So. Okay, so there was one other piece we were going to talk about with these fundings, but since it's, I don't know if you still want to chat about it, Jason, real quick. Uh, yeah, why not? Since we pushed it off, but I think you can still talk about it. Nobody's got anything better to do. Uh, Jason O'Brien, PPACG, good afternoon. Um, I think given the conversation so far, this will just be a very, very preliminary reaction to something that's, that's probably a good ways out. but. Um, one project that the staff would like to bring forward for your consideration for the multimodal funds is a tri-county study that was proposed by some of our board members. Um, as you know, PPACG houses the MPO, but we're also a larger council of governments that encompasses a three-county region, El Paso, Teller, and Park County. Um, and we thought that the uh, multimodal funds would be appropriate for a larger study of this kind because they're state funds. They do not have to be spent within the usual federal MPO fund boundary. Um, and the proposal generally was that we conduct a high-level study of the three-county region using the multimodal fund specifically um, to give us a better view of the whole transportation picture because we know that you know the issues don't stop at the magical urbanized area line. Um, and to do it without taking away any funds that traditionally are spent within the MPO area. So kind of a do no harm to the MPO philosophy. Uh, the study um, would be the first of its kind, at least in recent history, um, looking at the whole Council of Governments region. And it would be fairly high level, um, establishing a larger regional network, um, some mobility corridors, some priorities, and developing um, future projects. 
um, and priority setting, of course, to avoid duplicating our, our 2045 plan would be mainly outside of the MPO area. And uh, the projects arising from this, the projects that are developed as part of the plan, um, would not be competitive with projects coming from our MPO members if they were projects outside of our MPO area, um, at least not competing for our usual federal program funds, for our TIP funds, because the TIP funds still cannot be spent outside of the MPO area. Um, so again, no harm to the MPO. Um, members of the MPO would also be included in the study. Um, it's just that the study would include everybody in the three-count area. I know that uh, John Leosados has mentioned the study before, and I believe a, a draft scope was circulated, and we did get some, some good comments and made some changes. So thanks to those of you who, who made comments. And what I think we'd like to do when the time comes is to come back and ask this group to recommend a set-aside for the study um, in the interest of letting us get started and get the ball rolling off the top of the multimodal funds. And we're looking at an amount in the neighborhood of about 250000 for the study. So any questions or just very early reactions to this now that it's a ways off? When, Who takes over when Brandy's not here? Well, I'm supposed to. Oh, but right, there you go. <laughs> My head we needed down. to appoint someone. <laughs> Good, I'm glad it's you. <laughs> so if you can get support to spend the PPACG side of the process here, mm -hmm. I have the other half. Oh, okay. Can I have some money too? <laughs> You've got the other half. How is that exactly? Well, we have TAP funds, so I have right. um, the ability to, to fund the other half. State TAP funds, you mean? No, it doesn't have to be. Okay. Because okay. the MMO funds are state. Right. So they can be partnered together. So I have TAP funds. John and I talked about this. So okay. um, if you can get the support on this side, we have the ability to fund the other half. Okay. So we have our local match. Great. Thank you. I saw another hand. Yeah, the local match was my question, so. Okay. Any other questions for Jason? Thanks. Thanks, Jason. All right, and any other questions on this item? All right. Thanks, Catherine. Okay, item eight, member entity announcements. If there's anybody, anything that anybody wants to share with everybody else that's going on in your community. I, I'd just like to say we will be implementing our fall service changes um, a week from this Sunday, Sunday, September 29th. So that's um, adding Saturday evening service um, on the same 13 routes that we have weekday evening service on. Um, so that will extend our service time until 9.30 or so on Saturday evening. And then adding uh, frequency to five routes on Sunday from 60 minutes to 30 minutes. Any, anything else? All right. Items for future TAC meetings? How about MMO? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. More details. Um, and so the and the tip call for projects kicks off October first, yeah. right? So we'll we'll be a couple weeks into that for the next by the next tech tech meeting. Um, yeah. Okay. And Brian, I guess we'll have our TAP application ready on October 1st as well for the region. So that'll be available on October 1st as well. Okay. All right. What's the match on the region TAP? 8020. 20 And Wendy, so how does that get um, disseminated? I mean, 
I know I, I've been hearing about it. The um, application? Yeah. I mean, the, so that's a good question because this time around, they're, they're being the folks out of Denver are pushing that we have a centralized location um, on the web to, to go and get it. Um, if anybody needs a specific copy sent to them because they can't get to it, uh, my phone number is everywhere. Call me. I'll make sure you get it. Okay. <laughs> Any sense of when that will be due? Um, yeah, they're due in December. The initial application is due in December. The final one is, I think, after the holidays. That way you have a chance to work with the engineers with the local agency group on the project. It's early December, and then they have three weeks to go through the applications. They kind of cut them short mm -hmm. um, in that process because they wanted to have it done before the holidays. But if we need to run into the end of the, the review period to the end of when the applications are due, they have flexibility to be able to schedule something outside of that window. And any sense yet of how much money? Um, it's a, it's still the same. It, it hasn't changed. It, it, we don't have any uh, updated numbers, so it's still 1.2. 1.2 1 .2. per year, yeah. And we're gonna we're doing three years. 21, 22, and 23. So what was that last part? Sorry. So it's 1.2 like always, yeah. and it's 21, 22, and 23. Okay. Good to know. All right. Anything else from anybody? All right. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next month or sooner. <laughs> <Not> really. <laughs>